Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, okay, I have another uh, question. Uh, and it's regarding uh, economics and how uh, a group of people can come to any place, gather together, and uh, create their own economics. Uh, what what exactly how how could you plan for that or is it or is it something that is that is planned or is it something that happens naturally this one's a barber this one uh, has a grocery store this one uh, is a plumber and this one is that and then they just naturally uh, patronize one another and because they because they live with one another and uh, they only go outside of that group when uh, no one in that group can um, can uh, provide the service. Uh, how could you, how could we take this concept and uh, implement it in a way that's by design and not just something that happens naturally? A lot of times, unfortunately, uh, we know that this we know that our brother is a painter, but rather than deal with him, we want to go and deal with someone else and not use him or use his business. And then in some cases, maybe um, this person, he um, he doesn't do the best job. So we would rather have someone who does a better job or we may feel he does a better job. But anyway, the question is how to come to a place, whether it's, uh, it could be even a city in America or to uh, another country and um, apply this um, enrich ourselves by patronizing our own businesses and establishing our own businesses amongst each other and circulating our wealth. So I guess the question is the power of circulating the wealth and what does it mean? Um, uh, what's the what's the core principle of that so that we can understand that in the beginning and then how to uh, establish that by design rather than uh, making it rather than it being like a natural occurrence but something you say okay you know this is what we're going to do intentionally do so that that we can we can enrich our own community assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi brother omar um yeah economic cooperation I think is a um, it's an outgrowth of some deeper rooted fundamentals in community and personal development and how people align themselves with either family training, personal training, historical patterns. And the fact that we find many African Americans uh, who have skills and resources and businesses find it difficult to patronize each other in these enterprises, whether they're in America or in other places, has largely to do with the same issues that we discussed in a previous Hydra note that we have been systematically um, disconnected and some of it has been because of our antiquated coping styles. Let, let, me, let, me, let me put it like this. During slavery there were some coping and survival mechanisms that were both culturally and psychologically rational for the slave to not have a vested interest in cooperating in terms of hard work with his or her enslavement. So laziness and the uh, inability or the unwillingness to work was a rational choice mechanism 
because the slave had nothing to gain from working hard uh, from slavery. Now, as we have moved on historically, those attitudes and coping mechanisms have become outdated. And many parts of our culture still holds on to these outdated coping mechanisms that have really crippled us and caused us to not relate in a healthy, positive way with each other. Does this naturally evolve? Yes. It naturally evolves when people highly identify upon a central identity. But if those people don't identify naturally, then it has to be taught and it has to be modeled. One of the things that interrupted that modeling uh, momentum in our history was the illusion of integration. And we're still suffering from that. During the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s, there was a flurry and wellspring of African American economic health and activity because we depended upon ourselves. Um, the other thing is capacity and initiative. You know, we have a lot of people that um, have an attitude that still is this carryover that I won't, you know, I don't see my efforts as worthy of me doing the best that I can, and so I'll do enough to get by. And therefore, we don't patronize each other because we see that the quality that we're paying for is absent. So we'll go to, you know, the Mexicans, or we'll go to the Jamaicans or someone else if we want to see someone put in uh, real hard work. This affects the Muslims and the non-Muslims as well. Uh, maybe not the Muslims as much, uh, because we have been able to benefit from earlier uh, movements in Islam that focus on self-reliance and self-help and do for self. But a lot of that has faded in recent years. So we, we need to really think about how do we develop institutional and organizational behavior to address these problems inside of our masajids and Muslim schools and family discussions. You know, a work ethos, a central core value of work initiatives and self-help and reliance has to be taught to the children. This has to be a community vision that is, you know, embraced by everybody. You know, we can't just educate our children for them to go get a job. We have to educate nimble thinking and initiative and the entrepreneurial spirit in our young people. And we have to embrace it ourselves. So I, I want to leave here. I'll just drop here uh, the conversation and pick it up again and uh, do a part two in this. Because as you know, when I was in Egypt with you, um, we, we talked about this quite often. And, um, you know, I think I did a, one of the talks, the halal breakfast and brunch talks, uh, rolling like a kabila, and our self-reliance uh, talk uh, addressed a lot of these issues. And I'll pick this up later on, inshallah. Okay, Aki, let's uh, keep this going. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.